Hi YouTube. A few days ago, Saf released a video playing the victim card and panhandling for sympathy, dropping some weird story, acting like he's the Robin Hood of Raid, claiming he likes to find bugs to give to the poor, or some fucking nonsense. I think it's fair to say I found the video pretty obnoxious, so I'm not particularly interested in wading through his multi-tier levels of bullshit. However, there was one part that seemed to indirectly mention a chat Saf and I had a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sensitive, I'll be honest. I tried to reason with some people, they weren't getting it. I accepted and respected the position when I realized they were just trying to do it to troll and be a bit difficult. I just moved on. I've got be I've got bigger things to deal with. After someone in the community made me aware that Saf was on Reddit talking shit about me, fabricating stories and claiming that my previous videos took him out of context, I figured I'd message him and give him a chance to provide the context he mentioned and even told him I'd make an apology video if he could provide it. But the conversation went exactly as expected, with Saf unable to provide any context, and with him continuing to play the victim and repeat the same lies. To be honest, I was barely able to get a word in and kept having to tell him I didn't need all his speeches. All I wanted was the context he claims I took him out of, but ended up being told his entire life fucking story. The conversation ended with him being patronising, rage quitting the chat, blocking me not only on Discord, but running away to block me on Reddit and YouTube also and later found out he's likely removing me from discords he has mod in. So I guess I'll never find out what the context is. See, normally Saf sticks to his four favourite words. Broken, problem, fix and nerf. But lately he's added a fifth word to his vocabulary. That's a 25% increase to his favourite words. For those of you watching that only speak autistic maths. This new word, context, much like his other favourite words, seems to have magical properties. In this case, he acts like if he says the word context, it makes things that he said in the past disappear. Or something. Fuck if I know. Anyways, even though Saf was unable to provide any actual context to the clips I used in my previous video, I figured I'd do him a favour, because I'm super duper nice like that, and upload an extended version of my last video with more of that sexy context Saf seems to love. Enjoy. Hey everyone, we've got a different kind of update preview for you today. We're showing off some balance changes coming to the Hydra. First up, we're setting the turn limit at 1,000 turns. Well, that just punishes every team that needs to go longer. That's not really fair. Context. Is there a way we can get around it? There isn't, okay? I'm being very direct and very blunt and very, probably a bit too aggressive with my statement here. You have to nerf Cadaver. There is no other solution. I've seen people give me loads of ideas. They've come forward with, well, what if you cap the turn limit? And I'm like, well, that just punishes every team that needs to go longer because they don't have big damage dealers. So that's not really fair. You know, that's, that's basically nerfing 75% to fix one champion. Of all changes made to Hydra, the only one that a majority of the community seem to have agreed on is that lowering the turn count was a positive change to the game. So the purpose of using this clip from Saf was to highlight how out of touch with the community he is, as he'd previously rejected the idea to fuel his argument on nerfing Corpulent. And let's not forget, while Mr. Safira enjoys LARPing as a developer, the actual devs would later go on to give an award to a member of the community for breaking their game with Corpulent. We're changing how the Serpent's will buff works. Most importantly, and brace yourselves, folks, it now reduces damage by 100% for a newly grown Hydra head. This is straight up what Saf threw out there as a suggestion, by the way. Yep, you read that right. Complete damage reduction. So that's the first thing I would do. Serpent's will, that Hydra head will not take damage. Context. So firstly, I would make Serpent's Will 100% incoming damage for the duration of that buff on a one turn, which means when a Hydra Head respawns, that Hydra Head will not take damage, but it will also make it that it can't take any buffs. So you can't Poison Cloud a respawned Wrath Head. So what I'm proposing they do, and also to improve the quality of life, is this will never allow you to deal damage to this Hydra Head until this Hydra Head takes a turn. Now you might be wondering, Saf, that sounds crazy, that sounds horrible. I would also, at the same time, make it so that whilst this buff is active, the Hydra Head cannot take any buffs. Huh? So that's the first thing I would do. Serpent's will, 100% incoming damage for the duration, but it can't receive buffs. You can still debuff it. You can still put block buffs, decrease attack. You can prepare to fight if you have to allow it to take a turn, but it can't receive buffs. You can still debuff it. You can still put block buffs, but it can't receive buffs. You can still put block buffs. This immediately solves the Trunder problem because Trunder cannot re-kill the heads when they come up. That slows her damage down. It probably means she has to pay attention to a lot of the mechanics of the boss, and those Trunder teams will not work the same way. You will have to adapt. You cannot just go in and go kill head, kill head, kill head, kill head. Now I understand a lot of people will be saying, yeah, but that's not fun. You're killing all of my teams. But I think the Serpent's will, 100%, can't be buffed 
buffed whilst under serpent's will, that should eradicate almost all of these exploitive mechanics because you cannot constantly keep cycling the decapitation. The window in which decapitation heads are up is lower. You might be able to kill those heads pretty quickly after they lose the serpent's will, but every single head has to take a turn when it respawns, and that would make it so much better. It will solve the trend problem. Now, I know a lot of people in the comments will probably be like, yeah, that'll kill all my teams. I'll have to rebuild everything. But this is the only way you're going to solve this problem without nerfing trend, in my opinion. Wrong. The missing context in this example is that Saf advocated to nerf Hydra in an attempt to make it a little easier for weak players and in no way provided any actual context to the clip I used. However, Mr. Safira and many of his stands seem to have the opinion that implementing the buff to Serpent's Will in the exact way Saf presented it would somehow have made it better. Regardless, claiming I took Saf out of context by not including this part is frankly laughable especially as Saf himself described this problem as having a 1% chance of happening. And you're, you're not going to want to build a team for the 1% chance, but that 1% chance can happen over a longer fight. Can someone please remind me, does anything in Raid have a 3% chance of happening? Anybody? The simple fact is, Mr. Safira was the only content creator advocating for this particular change to Hydra, and made many, many videos about it, and presented his opinions as the only solution. Undoubtedly, Plarium were influenced by his ideas and in part is the reason Hydra was ruined. We're also making changes to digestion and devouring. The consumption counters will matter more. Digestion and devouring lost much of its intended challenge over time. Which is what the design of the, the, the Hydra is meant to be. It was always meant to be one of the Hydra's key mechanics. This is what Hydra was meant to be. That consumption counter was meant to limit the, how long you could go in a, in a Hydra boss run. Context! So that's the first thing that I would do, fix that problem. Because what you will find then is the consumption counters will matter more as well because Hydra heads are taking extra turns, which means you have to work around the consumption counter, which means it makes it more strategically important that your team has these things. And it solves another major problem that people have, which is time. You will not be able to hit turn limit when you're having to deal with all these consumption counters, which is what the design of the, the, the Hydra is meant to be. This is what Hydra was meant to be. That consumption counter was meant to limit the, how long you could go in a, in a Hydra boss run. The problem is right now we can just ignore it and keep going, which means that you have to keep going as a player if you want to compete. You have to do the 1500 turn limit if you want to compete. And I think that's bad for the player. While in this example, Mr. Safira did not specifically ask for the changes to the digestion and devour mechanics that we would eventually receive. He is the only content creator that highlighted those mechanics as being something that should have more of an impact on people's runs. Shields will now receive a cap of one million points. A million shield is stupid. I should never have a system in the game that I can get that shield to a million. For context. The second thing is this exponential shield growth. They've kind of just nerfed Trent Wixwell anyway. So people can shout at me for what I'm about to say, but they've effectively nerfed it anyway. This shouldn't be scaling on the size of the shield. It should actually scale on a value of that he controls on his defense or something. And they should update the numbers and increase the strength. So you still get a good payoff, but you can never get to a million shield. A million shield is stupid. It's un like if, if I got champions that apply a 30,000 shield, I should never have a system in the game that I can get that shield to a hundred, like a million. While I could have used any number of clips of him talking about how infinite shields are bad for the game, I thought this one best highlights just how disgusting he is in his endless pursuit to have raid work exactly the way he thinks it should. With shields now capped at 1 million, he continues to advocate for it to be nerfed further. And when you consider the fact that Saf, of all people, is best positioned to know how everyone feels about Wixwell, it really puts it into perspective just how little he gives a shit about the community. He received a ton of backlash on this video, and you'd be hard pressed to find anyone in the comments on his side. Yet, here he is post-update and with shields now capped, still going after Wixwell. I guess it's safe to say this was a fake apology and he didn't believe for a second he was wrong. How do we make compelling long-form content when we have a champion that basically makes that boss irrelevant? If they release a new clan boss and it doesn't ignore shields, which punishes every shield champion, Wixwell will be the best champion in the game. Any new content piece that they're ever going to release, Wixwell, if you have him, kind of makes that content redundant. For those of you that don't understand the point Saf is trying to make, let me drop it in a translator for you. That being said, and this is me wandering into dangerous territories again about Wixwell, because obviously I, when I did my Wixwell video around what was happening with his shield growth, why was his shield growth terrible originally and then really good, and how potentially this is a problem in the way that they've set it up, I got a lot of negative feedback from a lot of people going, oh, you shouldn't nuke our champions on all this kind of thing. Oh, you shouldn't nuke our champions on all this kind of thing. Imagine eye rolling so hard at the idea that the vast majority of the community do not want their champs nerfed. Or maybe it's a case that Mr. Safira is simply incapable of understanding we all disagree with him. My personal view is Wixwell is, is not the issue here. Uh, I like that he's got a place in the game and I like that, um, you know, the, the reason we originally kind of like called him out as a, a good champion is it still exists. So, sorry, Saf, you can keep your job, but I don't agree. <laughs> and lastly, we come to everyone's favorite dwarven warrior herself, Trunda Guild Mallet. Trunda's second skill, Cloak of Ages, that will only ever be a normal hit. You need to stop the second hit from critically striking. And then Trunda is balanced. <laughs>
context. While the majority of the community advocated for Trunda to be nerfed, SAF is again the only CC that has mentioned countless times that preventing her A2 from critically striking would fix her. OK, that's enough. Can we stop the bullshit for a second? We all know SAF is not a Plarium dev. We all know SAF is not in the CC programme. But we also know, and it's well documented, that SAF has influenced Plarium countless times over the years. Bear in mind, like, they actually use SAF's channel to bug fix. Like, literally, SAF drops a video and it's like, oh yeah, it's bug dead. You can fix that one. Uh, oh, hold on a minute. Have we thought about this thing that's going to break the game? SAF just told us about it. We'll fix that. Like, they watch well, the channel. Well, let's just go to the last two ones. We've got the Narcissus Block Revive bug fix. That's that's been bug fixed. Enfeeble. When they realized how broken. I mean, the, the list is endless. We have the Razzlebug situation. That you know, mighty Uko. I'm just yeah. raising official non-paid, non-content creator yeah, QA. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yeah, none of this Hydra update has anything to do with SAF, right? Apologies for this video being so long, but I have hours of receipts on this clown. For example, are you aware that arrogant prick had the audacity to blame spenders for the problems in Hydra? My overall summary is this is going to hurt the average player more than it's going to hurt the Kraken and it was the Kraken that was creating the problem. Let me guess. I'm taking him out of context, right? Okay, I'm done. Feel free to unsubscribe, dislike, block, remove me or simply just call me names in the comments because honestly, I really couldn't care less.